Hello everybody, uh, Rob here, and today I want to talk about the newest thing going on when it comes to the Games Workshop sphere of things, and that is the Only Hands controversy. Cons whatever. And that is the fact that in current painting tutorials, you only see the person's hands. Uh, While well, before, two months ago and prior, you'd see the person's face and all that stuff. And their name is not in the video. So a lot of people are like, well, you're removing the character, the host, or, um, you know, the, the person from the video. You only hear them talking and you see their hands. Here's the thing. So if we go back two years ago, uh, or not two years ago, two months ago, I got to scroll all the way down here. And we go to one of these videos. Most of the time, you only see the person maybe, what, a few moments here and there. And if you look, the videos are 12 minutes, 30 seconds long. If you look at the current videos, they're only three minutes long. So when you look at it from one end to the other, it's they're saving money as well. They're cutting back on their overall video lengths. If you look at the overall videos themselves now, most of their painting tutorials, eight minutes, two minutes, seven, 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 seven. Like most of them are sub eight minutes. You get the long, the odd super long one here when it's like a super heavy detailed model. But overall, the videos themselves have also been cut back drastically in length. So I understand why they're not putting the person's face in there. Because most people, like myself, when I'm looking at watching these videos, I could care less what the person looks like. I could care less the person who is actually painting. I don't care about their facial expressions. I want to see the model being painted, I want, and I want it to be explained to me as I watch what exactly they're doing. And I want it concise, and I want it quickly, so I can look at it and go to the next thing, so I can look at the next version to see what I can do. I could care less about the person. Now, the person's name not on the video is a little different, right? I should, in my opinion, it should say, you know, hosted by Jane Doe, John Doe, whatever. So at least I know personally who the person is that I'm talking to. But I understand why they're taking the turn they're taking. One, they're cutting the videos down by 50 to 60% in most cases in length. Which makes sense if they're complaining about the fact that overhead is getting too expensive. So you're paying more for models. So they're cutting back on the video lengths. Cool. Fine. I understand that. But the other reason why they're doing it is I believe it's this gentleman's reason. Mr. Duncan Rose himself. Um, some people look at him and go, okay, cool. You know, his videos are amazing. His videos are awesome. It's cool. It's awesome, right? He's got tons and tons and tons of paint tutorials, and he's been doing it for two years. Here's the thing about his channel. If you go back on, um, I, think it's, um, I think it's YouTube Time Machine, he had almost 40,000 subscribers to his YouTube channel before he even uploaded his first few pictures. There's his first few videos. It's very interesting about that. If you look back on it, number two, he is now technically a competitor to a point to Games Workshop in regards to the fact that he's selling his own paints. The paints, by the way, that on stage one made $1.1 million in goals. This isn't counting people that have bought the paints outside of the Kickstarter. The Kickstarter raised $1.1 million. Now, is that a drop in the bucket for versus Games Workshop? Yes. But what this shows is that he built up his name, his brand, and now his future, basically his future business, all on Games Workshop's back. To put this in perspective, <laughs> let's go to a different video, but this is from eight years ago. He single-handedly built up this Warhammer channel, basically, when it comes to these painting tutorials. Which is cool, which is amazing. In the end, Games Workshop owes him nothing, and he technically doesn't owe them anything because they paid him to do it. They were like, "Hey, paint these things. We will record you, and we will put them on, you know, on uh, on media." Cool, that's fine. But when he goes by, not behind their back, but he decides, okay, now that this has been going for a couple of years, um, I'm gone. Bye bye. 
I'm going to go do my own thing, and then becomes basically a competitor, you can understand how Games Workshop will look at that and go, okay, well, hold on. We just invested eight to ten years into this guy. He immediately left and became a competitor to us. To put that in perspective to anybody, think about something that you really like to do. Say that was your business. Right? YouTubing. I hire an editor. The editor's editing my videos, figuring a lot of stuff about my videos, getting my my videos to look amazing. Then decides, you know what? I can do this YouTube thing on my own. Sends me an email. I quit. Creates a YouTube channel, pretty much doing the exact same thing I'm doing, but then becomes way, well, doesn't become popular, but becomes successful. Not as successful as me, but at the same time is playing on that, hey, I used to do this. I used to do this. I used to record. I used to do his videos. Cool. Even though he doesn't say, I I used to paint Warhammer stuff. That's what he is known for. He is known for doing Games Workshop minis. Now he's branching out, making his own paints and all that stuff. But Games Workshop probably looks at this and went, well, shit. We invested all this time into him, and now he's our competitor. We don't have many competitors in this field. This sucks. Well, let's see who our next host is going to be for this. Oh, he's leaving too. Now that he's built up a name recognition as well. So that guy left. I can't remember his name. right now. It was like John or Paul or something like that. But then he leaves. So obviously Games Workshop is going to look at this and go, wait, wait, wait. wait. So people are going to be are doing stuff on our videos, on our channels. They're getting recognition for it. Then they're spinning it off into their own thing. Cool that they're being successful. But they're also coming out with products that are now linked to their name, which is technically linked to us, because we're the ones that made the person popular by paying the person to do that thing. And then, you know, we're basically not getting anything out of this other than the fact that we spent eight to ten years grooming that person to be successful on their own, which is cool and all. But you can see where now Games Workshop is sitting there going, we don't want to do this again. We're basically grooming or we're basically training and paying our competitors. Over time, every time all our employee like these employees are going to become competitors. So to stop this from happening and to stop us from getting burned again, we're no longer putting their faces up and we're no longer putting their names up. To be honest with you, as a businessman, that makes sense. If I have an employee that leaves my business to create a competitive business, would I be mad? Yes. If it happens another time after that, meaning it's happened twice, then I look at that and go, okay, I'm obviously doing successfully enough and getting enough popularity that these people are now piggybacking off of that popularity to create their own thing. Therefore, I don't want this to happen. Because basically you're creating your own comp competition through yourself. And you, you don't want that as a business. And I'm 99.9% .9 sure that's exactly what's happened. Dude has raised almost $2 million for paint. So he has obviously one and two. I think two has almost 800. Yeah, 800 uh, as a goal. Um, I think it actually is already over, if I'm not mistaken. Um... Yeah, it was, it was finished a couple days ago. They put, you know, they got, he got eight hundred grand in the in the second wave of uh, coats or of uh, his paints, two thin coats, and then a one point one million. Like that's that's he he's raised almost two million dollars for his paints, not including people that have actually bought it from stores that carry it and things like that. So he's become extremely successful on the back of that company. The other gentleman that left that I can't think of his name right now. He is also building, uh, uh, you know, his own thing off of the back of the of uh, Games Workshop shop as well. So, did the way that they did things suck? Yes and no. I mean, they're doing their own thing, which is cool. I support that. That's fine. Was there any burning of bridges? We don't know. Was there any sort of internal politic things going on? We don't know. But in the end, I can understand why Games Workshop now is protecting itself and its hosts 
by not putting their names out there. And the reason why is it's not to protect the person. It's to prote- protect the brand from someone else basically leeching off of that brand to become successful on when they become independent five, six, seven years down the road. It's basically just not breeding your own competition from in, from your own from your own house. And I understand why they're doing it. I think though they should change a few things. Like they should put the person's name at the beginning, say hosted by. And for me, that's good enough. You're telling me who the host is and who the person is that painted it. Now here's the other thing too. A lot of people talk about the fact that they don't give credit to the artist that's doing this. I'm not going to go into all that stuff because that to me is more of a gray area. And the reason why is because if you're getting paid a paycheck to do this, that's them basically saying, hey, you're really good. We like your work. Here's your check This, you know, for, for, for doing this as a job. So, I mean, the credit there is you're getting a wage. It's like, okay, so next time you go to McDonald's, are you going to give the fry cook the credit that they deserve? The burger person the, the, the credit they deserve? Um, because they're just getting paid to put something together. Kind of the same thing here. The question needs to be asked, are these people even artists? Uh, and that's way above me to even ask that question. But in the end, in my opinion, when it comes down to this whole only hands thing, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, I understand why they're doing it. It's they're protecting their brand. They don't want to have more people leech off the brand name and then become super successful a la Duncan Rhodes. Um, I mean, that's how I found him first uh, as well. I'm not going to lie. I'm subscribed to his YouTube channel because I saw him on the Warhammer channel. And then I'm like, oh, he has his own channel too. Cool. Like, that's how I did it. I saw him on Warhammer and then I saw his own channel. And unfortunately, if you're doing the same thing on both channels, it's kind of... I understand why he did it, where he's branching off on his own. But at the same time, it's like... When people are subscribing to your YouTube channel before you even have videos up, that kind of tells me that's kind of sneaky. Like, it seems like to me like you keep boosting your own numbers until you hit a certain point then you start putting it videos and quit your job uh, it's that's kind of i don't like that um but yeah in the end i mean to me it's not a big deal i understand why they're doing it all they got to do in my opinion to make things easier is just say hosted you know you say how to paint uh strike force augustus super crack and super frag weapons uh, narrated by or um, hosted by and just put their name there and that's good enough for me and to be honest with you the fact that they know this because they're turning off comments they also don't care which I'm going to do another video about the fact that um, Games Workshop does not care about you and I will explain as to why but with that in mind thanks for watching I really appreciate it I'll see you in the next video bye bye